Why, hello there. I'm Robert Wilhelm Eberhard Bunsen, and this is my Draw My Life. I know what you're thinking, the guy who made the Bunsen burner. Yep, that's me. See, I was born in Gohingen, Germany. My father, Christian Bunsen, married my mother, and they had me. My father's ancestors held public offices in Erolsen. My mother was the daughter of a military officer. Life was swell with my three older siblings. I got educated in Gohingen and then moved to Holzminden. During my childhood, I would describe it as a wayward child, but not to brag, I was a genius. I graduated school in 1928 and went to college in Gohingen. In two years, I had gotten my PhD in chemistry because of my work on the humidity meter, which I also got an award for. During my time in college, I studied in chemistry, physics, mathematics, and mineralogy. My real passion was, well, you'll find out later. In 1834, I hit my first big accomplishment. I was testing a cure for arsenic poisoning with my collaborator, Arnold Berthold, and then I got the idea to make it indigestible. It worked, and voila, arsenic poisoning had a cure. During more testing, I accidentally got involved in an arsenic explosion. With the very combustible cacodyl cyanide, I was poisoned, but my cure saved me. However, I lost sight in my right eye, permanently blinding me. I wish I could have seen that one coming. The cure is still used today, so I guess that unfortunate accident was for the better, after all. Once I recovered, I was back to work. In 1841, I created the Bunsen battery. Although the battery is already created, its major difference was that it used carbon instead of platinum. This made electrochemistry cheaper and more accessible. In the future, people will replace carbon with magnesium. During this time, I also helped out with improving the efficiency of coal burners. By simply recycling the material, they could double efficiency. My work would later be improved on. From 1838 to 46, I was observing factories during the Industrial Revolution with another friend, Leon Playfair. We both studied the gases in iron furnaces and discovered that more than 50 to 80% of the gases were wasted. We then discovered how to recycle these gases that escaped the furnaces and recycled some of the valuable byproducts like ammonia, limiting waste. Yay! By the way, I was described as a perfect gentleman who never participated in any disputes, so naturally, I did not have any rivals. In 1846, I took a trip to Iceland, such a luscious cream place, it makes me question the people that named it. Over there, I studied geysers. I came up with a theory that the high pressure underground kept the water that should be boiling in a liquid state and that when the pressure got low enough, a mass boil would occur causing an eruption. This was one of the leading geyser theories of the time. This helped lead to more discoveries of geysers. From 1849 to 1859, I worked with my good friend Sir Henry Roscoe for over 10 years. We worked on the formulation of hydrogen chloride and discovered that the light emitted from the sun was equal to the chemical energy when hydrogen chloride is formed. One year, the university changed the pipelines in my lab to carbon gas lines, and this influenced me to change the existing burners to work well with the new lab. During this time, in 1855, my lab assistant, Peter de Saga, designed a burner, but I made some key adjustments, which would make this burner the Bunsen burner, named after yours truly, moi. The gas and air were pre-mixed in a longer mixing chamber before combustion, causing the resultant flame to have a higher temperature, but be less luminescent. Perfect for my experiments with Gustav Kirchhoff. One day, I got a job at the University of Goingen. Here, I could teach and research as much as I liked. In 1859, I partnered up with Gustav Kirchhoff, a Prussian physicist who was working on spectroscopy, a relatively new field at the time. Together, we created my most important invention, in my opinion, the one I should really be known for, the Bunsen Kirchhoff spectroscope. This spectroscope was very accurate, being able to analyze the chemical composition of a substance by a large amounts of the chemical. Together with the help of this spectroscope, we discovered rubidium in 1860 and cesium in 1861. This invention helped other scientists discover other new elements, such as hafnium, europium, and thallium. I continued working with Kirchhoff until the late 60s. During my time, it was the end of the Renaissance and the Enlightenment age. People began to discredit some of that religious theory and relied more on the credibility of scientific theory. 
the glorious German Empire came to power and was not suppressed by that nasty Napoleon. There were more public lectures, which engaged the middle class and lower class in learning about science, and many new advancements were also being made in electricity and steam, making transportation much easier. This allowed for the spread of many scientific ideas and theories. Scientific societies were also coming to fruition, allowing for the easier dissemination of scientific ideas and more advancements in science in general. In 1889, I retired. Yay! I finally pursued my true passion, mineralogy and geology. I took walks around Heidelberg. I died on August 16, 1899, after a three day sleep. Thinking back, I guess I want some awards, such as the British Royal Society's Copley Medal in 1860 or the Royal Society's Davy Medal in 1877. And I guess I was in the Royal Society, Chemical Society of London, and the French Academy of Sciences. I heard they made an award named after Kirchhoff and I for people who've made contributions to spectroscopy. It was aptly named the Bunsen Kirchhoff Award. What is it with people naming things after themselves? The Bunsen burner? I never did get any patents for any of my apparatuses that I helped to invent, because I didn't want to profit off of my idea. Nor did I marry or have children. Mm, I guess my students are one of my only legacies. By any chance, have you heard of Dimitri Mendeleev and Walter Mayer? Oh well, that was my life. Pretty eventful, I'd say. Thank you for watching. I'd like to think I was a pretty influential person, seeing as different iterations of my Bunsen burner are still used today, and the science of spectroscopy is thriving thanks to the many advancements and discoveries that Kirchhoff and I made. You'll see me soon in that chemistry lab, I can assure you.